Welcome to the best of the Leon Charney Report. For over two decades, Leon Charney, one of the architects of the historic Camp David Peace Accords, has interviewed some of the most important figures in modern day history. These interviews provide a window into some of the most significant events of the last 50 years. In this excerpt, recorded in July of 2000, Leon Charney speaks with Nasser al Kidwa, the Palestinian ambassador to the UN, and Yasser Arafat's nephew, who articulates the Palestinian idea for peace with Israel. Welcome to another Leon China Report. What are we going to talk about tonight? The summit meeting that's going to be held in Camp David, former place that I uh, was a little bit of an occupant with uh, Jimmy Carter. Those of you who know me from the show know that I was uh, fairly involved with the Camp David 1, we'll call it. And uh, tonight we're going to talk about Camp David 2 and to get the Palestinian side of uh, what he thinks is going to happen, we invited the uh, ambassador for the Palestinian mission to the United Nations, who was a nephew of uh, the chairman, Yas Arafat, and his name is Nasser al-Kidwa. First time on the show, and welcome. Thank you. Is this a big event for the Palestinians? Of course, I think it's a big event for the whole Middle East, and uh, let's hope that it will succeed. Now, you just come back from uh, Cairo, huh? and you... Yes, from Palestine. We... Uh, we uh, I have just finished the meeting of the Central Council. You probably heard about this also, the meeting. Uh, was that, as, as was that the meeting the council, that says that there. you'd like to declare a state by September? That was among the decision taken by the uh, Central Council, yes, that uh, with the end of the one-year extension period of the transitional five years agreed upon between the two sides, we have to take measures to actualize, let's say, actualize the uh, Declaration of Independence of 1988. Now, you people analyze Israel all the time as Israel analyzes you people. Do you believe that uh, Barack is, is going to Washington with uh, uh, a directive from his government, or do you think he's very weakened by what has transpired in the last few days where Natan Sharansky is threatening or will pull out his party, and also the National Religious Party will pull out? Yes, indeed, he definitely has some, some troubles within the government, but I think he is not that weak. I also think that uh, no Israeli prime minister would have an absolute power within the parliament, within the Knesset. So maybe uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Barak's plan is to go directly to the, uh, the population with a kind of referendum. So if you combine both, his relative strength, not absolute strength, plus his plan to go directly to the people, you would conclude that he is not in that bad shape. So you believe that he can bypass the parliament or the Knesset and go directly to the people if he brings back a, a deal. President Clinton yesterday said that, uh, you know, I've been through this Camp David stuff a little bit, and he lowered expectations, saying that if you got a framework or, you know, an agreement to agree and then an agreement not to agree, as we had sometimes in Camp David, one, uh, he would be, in a sense, satisfied. Would that satisfy the Palestinians? Well, I, I think that we will, we will have some, uh, some serious efforts in, in Camp David. We also probably have a kind of, of a process or, or whole procedure. I don't think that it will be only a uh, few days meeting followed by uh, an agreement. Probably we uh -huh. will see more than more than that. Uh, maybe a continuous meeting with some interruptions, maybe two or three meetings. I'm not sure as yet, but uh, we are talking here about a process which will lead uh, to the agreement. The, the most important thing is to meet the critical uh, deadline, which is the 13th of September this year. Well, that's very important what you said now, because when we did Camp David 1, the idea was to wrap up an agreement. And what we got was an agreement in principles in yes. September, and then we did the treaty in March. That's correct. And uh, you're saying to me that what this might be is a process, and then stop, and then go into a process again. Some people contend that President Clinton <coughs> excuse me, organized the... Uh, Camp David II agree, uh, meeting in early July to give him some more time in case he has to convene again. Probably that's, that's correct. We are talking here about attempts to reach framework agreement. Uh, 
and then maybe some kind of referendum in Israel, and then uh, at another attempt to reach final agreement, and maybe at a later stage, after some kind of implementation, we are talking about treaty. So the there are several steps right. ahead, ahead of us. But the deadline is for a treaty or for what on September? What What does the deadline call for? Well, we might try to reach a treaty by 13th of September. I personally think that this might might prove uh, too too much for, for you... the parties. If we if we succeed in reaching a framework agreement, followed by a referendum, and then an agreement itself, final agreement. A referendum for the Israelis, and how about the Palestinians? Do you need a referendum also? We we have we have our uh, constitutional. Uh, institutions. We have uh, the PNC, we have the Central Council, we have, of course, the Legislative Council also of the uh, Palestinian Authority. And that, for us, I think, would be enough. So you don't think you have to go directly to the people? You go through the process that's called for in your, in your constitution? I think so. That would, be, that would be enough. But in any case, after the agreement, uh, after the establishment of the state, of course, there uh, should uh, there should be some new elections for both the parliament and the presidents in, in pa Palestine? Palestine. Yes, yes. What? Uh, when did you see your uncle last? Just two days ago. You see, uh, I, I'll assume he's tired. That's for sure. But uh, is he excited about going to Camp David? He is tired, as you said. I think uh, his his life pattern is uh, is too hard. It's, I think, hard even for uh, young, uh, young ones to, to take continuous work, continuous travel, continuous flying, continuous tension. And, of course, that's, uh, that's tiring. Um, you add to that, of course, the, uh, the responsibilities, especially during this period where we are probably very close yeah. to, achieve, to achieving something big, uh, for the first time for the Palestinian people. Uh, I'm sure that uh, he feels the burden of the responsibilities uh, while coming here to Washington for the summit. How big a team will he bring, do you know? I think there will be some uh, limitation uh, imposed by the host, given the limitation of, of the place itself. Right. Camp David. Yeah, I heard about 12, <coughs> 12 persons from each side, uh, plus some additional delegations staying in uh, a place maybe 10, 15 miles away from Camp David. They do this, by the way, uh, to have a, a news blackout. It's a place, uh, one of the things that President Carter wanted to do is to, to get everybody away from the media so there could be no leaks. And in the Middle East, boy, that's a big thing because there's a lot of leaking in the Middle East. So the, And a friend of mine who covered this event said he was holed up right outside Camp David for 10, 12 days as a reporter, and he was absolutely bored to tears. I mean, nothing yeah. was coming out. And uh, so they, they hope to do this without a lot of uh, leaking, which is very, very important in the Middle East because it, uh, it could topple something before you know it. So it's, it's very rough. Uh, when, when I went to Camp David, or well, we, we did the Camp David Agreement, uh, there was basically an outline in President Carter's mind about where he was going to go with this thing. He had done some real good polling, mm. and he had some real good information, and I personally was involved bringing him some, some concepts which uh, we worked on before Camp David. This thing seems to have happened so quickly that I'm not sure, I'm not sure President Clinton knows where he wants to drive this. So, do you have a feeling about this? Of course, I don't have information, but uh, I doubt that, that the president doesn't have a fair idea about the direction. Uh, let's not forget that uh, the administration has been engaged in this thing for the last seven years. And if the administration, after seven years, uh, do not have or does not have initial idea about No, I think the they direction. have ideas, but I don't know if they can solve the real big issues. As I understand it, Jerusalem is a big issue. Refugees is a big issue. Indeed. Indeed, those are the two big issues, right? Is there a third big issue? Well, probably all the issues are big. Uh, the one which becomes the biggest is the one which is being negotiated at that point. But I think all of them, all of them are big. The territorial dimension is 
is important. But Nasa, do you really expect that the uh, refugees who were who left Israel in '48 can go back and live physically in Israel? Or are you looking for compensation there? <clears throat> On all issues, I think we have we have two aspects. One is the principles involved, international law involved. On which the parties have have to agree, the parties have to accept the provisions of international law. Another aspect is the practicalities of the matter. Right. What kind of mechanism we can agree upon to to implement to implement kind of a solution? Uh, I think if we apply those two aspects to all issues, including the refugee, we can find a reasonable solution. Really, it's good to know. Yeah. How about, I, how about the big issue of Jerusalem? Well, same same thing. Same thing. Uh, international law is clear when it comes to Jerusalem. Uh, Israeli occupation of eastern part of the city is not uh, is not acceptable. Uh, also, international uh, international community uh, agrees that the city must remain united, must not be closed uh, before anyone freedom of access uh, to all, uh, uh, not only inhabitants, but to all people of the world should be guaranteed. And on the basis of this, I think we can find, uh, we can find a solution which would uh, respond to the rights of the two communities, the two peoples, and also the rights of the three religions of the world, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Jerusalem does not accept exclusive exclusive ownership, and I think the Israeli side uh, understands that. Now, as an opening position, one could say it's not subject to negotiations, but in fact, if uh, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel is to be recognized by the international community, if this is to be accepted by the Palestinians, the Arabs, and the Muslims, all Israeli officials know that a reasonable solution should be found, one which respond to the rights of the Palestinian people and the rights of the Muslim as well as so the So you're Christian, saying Christian that it's a possibility that one thing you could accept the Israel, uh, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, provided that the three religions have access to the city? No, no. This is the, uh, I was talking about principles, but we can accept uh, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel if East Jerusalem is accepted as the capital of Palestine. I see. What about uh, Abu Dis? Abu Dis? That concept? Well, Abu Abu Dis is outside. It's outside. a suburb of yeah, Jerusalem. Suburb. Aren't you it's building a building there for parliament or something? Yes, yes, and we uh, we of course will will have to to expand. Uh, East Jerusalem, the original East Jerusalem, into new suburbs, including including Abu Dis. But the issue remains, of course, the Arab neighborhoods uh, in Jerusalem itself. Let's let's uh, let's try to recall certain facts. One, the overwhelming majority of Israelis have never set foot in the Arab neighbors neighborhoods of of East Jerusalem that the Arab neighborhood of East Jerusalem, including, by the way, the old city, the old city, remains overwhelmingly Arabs, in spite of all settlement activities and, and, and things of that sort. Three, that the city is, is actually, if not, if not formally divided, is distinguishable. You walk in Jerusalem, the moment you cross from West Jerusalem to East Jerusalem, you immediately, you immediately notice the new situation you are you are seeing or you are you are facing. So uh, the 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 differences is is there. The uh, the actual uh, distinction is there. What we what we need to do is to formally recognize the existing uh, differences and the distinction which 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 is there, and to try to find the best legal and political formulas to uh, accommodate uh, accommodate both sides. The negotiators, have they been working on these uh, problems uh, incessantly, just continuously? You, Israeli, yes. The Israeli and the Palestinians have been meeting all the time, right? 
Negotiators have been working on these issues. Uh, intellectuals have been working right. on these issues. There have been scores of, of meetings and seminars uh, among uh, the two sides at all levels to, to, discuss, uh, to discuss these issues. And it seems to me that the parameters of a solution are known. So you're pretty hopeful. To, uh, to the officials. I am hopeful as long as uh, the two sides are willing to take the necessary decisions. What is needed now is political decision, not ingenuity. Ingenuity, of course, will be also needed, but the main thing is decisions, political decisions on the part of both leaders. And I think from, from our side, the Palestinian side, the, the will to take those decisions are there. There's a lot of uh, uh, rumor around that the, the, your uncle has a tough time uh, convincing his population to make any compromise. Is that true? Well, I think, I think the, the situation is, is basically the following. The Palestinian side believes, correctly believes, that uh, they have already made the, the compromise. The Palestinian, the Palestinian people believe that all Palestine is theirs, just as many Israelis believe that all mandated Palestine, this territory, Eretz Israel, whatever you want to call it, is theirs. The Palestinian side now accepts uh, the compromise of, of establishing the, their own state on a mere 23% of the size of the whole territory. That's less than a quarter of mandated Palestine. So as such, the Palestinian people believe that uh, they have already made uh, their share of the necessary compromise. Uh, nevertheless, I'm, I'm not saying that uh, that will be it. We will be also uh, ready to show some flexibility, but certainly a very limited one, given the fact, as, as I was trying to explain, that we have done our share, we believe. In modern Middle East history, only one peace treaty has stood the test of time, the 1978 Camp David Accord. In the new documentary film, Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace, learn the true story behind the greatest diplomatic achievement of our time and its lessons for the future. The price of peace is very high to have this courageous man and my close friend killed. Winner of the Telly Award for Best Cultural Program. Now available at select stores including Barnes & Noble and online at Amazon.com. The preceding program was brought to you by Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace.